All right, what's up, guys? So this morning I woke up like and got like a lot of like saw a lot of messages on Discord about like bands that happened. My hat's crooked. I don't care. Bands that happened at VGC Worlds last night in Japan. So just going to kind of go over that. This is kind of like a commentary style video. So I'm using like some tweets, going to like look at some of the replies, give like my thoughts on it. Cause I've I've skimmed through a little bit. I think there's some like kind of bad takes and some kind of reasonable takes and just kind of go from there. So this is the tweet that I saw that kind of, I guess, started it all. This guy, Brady Smith. And I just want to say that I'm not making any kind of like, please don't take anything I say in this video as like any kind of personal attacks to anyone that is watching. Please don't whatsoever. I'm just kind of like, I'm just giving commentary. So um, this guy, Brady Smith was the tweet I first saw when I went scrolling back last night. And apparently he got, like I said, from the tweet you see, he got DQ'd for half his team being modified slash ginned. So there are like three things here. Well, two things here that stand out to me. So if you look at the tweet, it says he ginned a Lando and an, an Urshifu. So Landorus and Urshifu, if you're doing uh, competing in Scarlet and Violet, those Pokemon do not come from Scarlet and Violet. And I think this is what's probably my prediction is what's kind of like screwing people over because of this, because of home trackers. Home trackers have always been a thing since home came out. But starting with Scarlet and Violet is when you really start seeing some things change up a bit. So the main thing is like, let's say let's use Landers, for example. Landers can only be obtained from games outside of Scarlet and Violet. But let's say you gen a Landers in Scarlet and Violet. It's legal, but technically that Landorus has not passed through home. So if you take that same Landorus and then let's say you take that Landorus and you put it into home, home can tell that it didn't originate from whatever game it should have been in. So home will alter the met data. And now this Pokemon can, in some instances, I've seen it get flagged in home. So I think this is what's happening. And same thing for Urshifu. Urshifu only comes from Sword and Shield. So if you take an Urshifu that you ginned in Scarlet and Violet and has been nowhere else, it's going to be missing that home tracker data. And I think that's what's getting people. It does kind of suck. To my knowledge, they're waiting until Worlds to do this because you got people that have competed for literally almost a year to earn their way there just to find out, bam, you're gone. I really wish they would have done this stuff earlier. So I do I do sympathize for any players that have been banned after competing and getting this high up. But I mean, it's 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 the rules, unfortunately, about Gen Pokemon, and this gives it away completely. So I'm gonna look at some of the replies. And he said, I guess like the weirdest per part of all of this is that they waited till the world championships. And that's that's my whole point entirely, is they waited this long. And another thing is that, like, you can get around this. So for the Landorus or the Urshifu, he could have technically just ginned them in Scarlet, I mean, not Scarlet and Violet, in Sword and Shield, sent them to home. Or if he doesn't have the games, like it says, have a friend do it, send them to home, and then trade them to them after they bring them into Scarlet and Violet. It's that easy. But as anyone can tell you that, like, um, owns a Discord server or anything like that, because, like, if you if you're watching this video and you don't know who I am, I'm all for ginning. I've got guides about ginning. I run a ginning Discord. I am all for ginning. But I will say this, and I think most Discord bot owners will agree with me when I say this, that some of the VGC players are kind of blatantly obvious with their ginning. Cause like, man, like they'll come in the Discords, they'll have VGC right next to their name. We can see like your OT says VGC and all this other stuff. So it's like like, yeah, like, if you're that bold to just do it right out in the open, I'm going to assume that you might not be taking the proper steps to make sure that your things are gen correctly. I and mean, we've seen these of like Kurt's tweets where he shows that people are just being really lazy about ginning. Like, just because things are legal doesn't mean there aren't any like telltale signs that you ginned it badly. So people are like, how they know what happened? He said, I knew their hack check was going to be super good going into here. Again, a home tracker being missing 
is not hard. I don't I don't know how they're checking this stuff, but it is not a hard thing for them to do to check that you don't have a home tracker. It's it's not at all. So I understand the idea of rewarding commitment and linking lore to IRL, but finding the best trainer or whatever. It's a cool thought, but to expect everyone to be able to afford it. I'm on my third Switch Lite because they just blew, blow up. I can't spend thousands to play Pokemon. So I don't, I'm not going to read every tweet, by the way. I don't really know. I've never heard people send their Switch Lights blow up. This kind of seems like maybe an exaggeration. I mean, I don't know. But like I said, yes, I do understand if you want to play legit, you're going to have to buy games. You've got to commit time to the games, which is why I support Jenning and Pokemon, which is why I think that they should do some kind of like team builder aspect, kind of like Showdown. But hey, I don't make the rules. And somebody's saying like VGC is already inaccessible. Can't believe how difficult they make this game for people to be able to properly play. Again, I've already addressed this. It's not inaccessible. I can't say some words. Inaccessible. Uh, side of the game are way more accessible. Yeah, it's it's way more accessible. It's just it's just mainly the legendaries and past gen stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, like it's insane. You're expected to have multiple to have copies of multiple games just to be able to get the Pokemon you need. Like I said, a good take from the legit side, but from the Genic side, awful take. Yeah, and I think this is probably one of the more fair points it really addresses what i'm talking about unfortunately there's a part of me that's glad hack check actually catches stuff now but it's overshadowed by the unbridled lunacy of a format where most of the best pokemon are transfer event or raid exclusive on top of some lingering quality of life issues with pokemon competitive overall and i agree completely with that and let me just scroll through Like, I mean, I've talked to some people and like, especially like in like uh, VGC side, not VGC, like the peak egg side of things. A lot of us are, a lot of people are kind of like thinking that it has to do with home trackers. And I'm really thinking this has to do with home trackers and they're just now enforcing it. Like I said, he highlighted the Urshifu and Landorus. These are mods that if you gen them improperly or they're gen properly, but gen them and they haven't gone through home properly. It's it's going to be shown. You say this is very unfair. I bet half these uh, people are using Gen Pokemon. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd probably say it's more like 80 to 90 percent of. People use Gen Pokemon, I'm just being honest. I mean, like you got like, I'm not going to say it, but like, yeah, definitely like most of the people there use Gen Pokemon. But I think some people Gen them the right way. It's only really going to be detected if you don't gen properly. Somebody said, glad to see you gone. We don't need cheaters in the game like you. Next time, spend the money. That's a kind of like, I mean, I think that's a fair opinion for somebody to say, because regardless of what you think, I mean, using gen Pokemon is against the rules. So technically it is cheating, even though I fully support genning. If it's against the rules, it's cheating. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, this is this is a good point. If you're a professional in a field, you should be expected to buy your tools, switch in relevant games. I know you kind of realize that now, but the fact that the company finally, company finally is actually able to tell gen mods is a good sign for competitive integrity. They've always been able to tell. They just didn't enforce it. Uh, okay, I'm going to check out some other stuff. Uh, this was a tweet. It was in the reply somewhere that I kind of highlighted, but this is responding to Brady. 
And this somebody was like, whoever traded you them mons is sus. And this guy is like, my friend traded them and they were all caught slash bred by him. Brady told me himself they used PKX to modify his Grim Snarl, Lando, and Urshifu, which all came legitimately from my pen, my friend. We've talked to Brady and he acknowledged he took a risk using PKX. So if these were indeed caught legit, what might have happened is he put them into PK Hex and he cleared the home tracker himself. I'm not there are some settings to where home trackers can be cleared, but I don't know. Cause like in so basically in order for him to edit them in PKX, yeah, okay, I'll I'll break it down for you right now. So in order for unless he has a hack switch, the way for him to edit them in PKX is basically he did this. He took those three mods, he went to a Discord bot, and he dumped them. Dump them basically means that you you get the file for that Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure most Discord bots, when you dump a file, it clears the home tracker. So when he put them into PK Hex to do edits, they did not have home trackers on them. So that means when he did bring them into his game, it's pretty clear that there was some editing and modification done. So that's another thing you really got to pay attention to. And if if he like made up a home tracker, that's same thing. Like so he took the risk for lack of better options as a, as at Worlds, it's especially important your mods are optimal. Not having a copy of PLA or Swish on hand prevented him from getting those mods himself, specifically Lando and Urshifu. But again, this just comes down to it's it's so easy. This could have been so much easier not get caught if you just had someone gen them in. There's Discord servers everywhere. You can literally do all this stuff in like five minutes literally in like five minutes at worlds and have your mods ready so it's just like this is what i mean by just not being well versed on how to make proper mods now look at the replies oh i apologize du -du -du -du. there was a tweet i saw earlier that i can't find right now i think it might have been the quote tweets let me see yeah here we go so I like this. I'm a blissy dude. I've seen his content. He really breaks down a lot of like the time it takes to make legit teams. And I think this is, it goes with what I said earlier. This is an absolutely great take, but it is also a bad take in terms of like the Jenny side. So he says, everyone should agree. This is fully correct. If you want Urshifu, zero attack, trans slash Cresselia or zero speed Cresselia, you realistically need a minimum BDSP and Switch DLC, which is an extra $150 in addition to SV. And if you want an Urshifu, you also need PLA Ridiculous. That is a great take in regards to the legitimacy aspect, but it does not address the laziness. Let's not say lazy, the improper ways that people are getting stuff in. <clears throat> And this guy, Danny, says there's so many ways to legitimately to get a legitimate Cresselia over literally 15 years. Switch DLC came out three years ago. People have had ample time to assemble the Pokemon they need. Nothing ridiculous about needing to play a game to gain access to strong Pokemon or better yet. And I think that is that's actually a good take. If you've been competing for years, I mean. And you know what you need to do to get the right Pokemon then it's not really an excuse. Unless it's your first Worlds and you've never played these other games, then there's not really an excuse to not just do the stuff the correct way from the correct game source. And he says, is this your first Worlds? Also, who trades Legends? Also, this dude did trade and get owned for it. I think this is a this is kind of a bad take. People trade Legendaries all the time. Like I feel like this is a very... A very casual take about who trades legendaries. Always. People constantly do it. Like, yeah, and like he addresses this. See, I'm going to like that. He says, see the excuse you just came up with. Who trades legends? The people who want legitimate Pokemon do trade it with a reputable trader, a.k.a. someone he likely charges for trades, a.k.a. they gen their Pokemon. And this guy says, I've never once traded a legendary away. No one I know has either. It's not an excuse. You're once. Yeah, this is. See, I hate because I feel like people are going to see this video and they're going to come at me. But this is, I feel like, the most. 
this is a horrible take. This is a horrible take. And I feel like this is just this is just really disingenuous because people trade for legends all the time. If you've ever, ever been in my streams and stuff like that, people are always trading legendaries. If you've been in Facebook groups, people are always trading legendaries. This is an extreme casual take. Like I and I, I don't mean any disrespect to Tom Blissey, but I feel like this is just completely just made up BS. This is completely made up BS. I mean, if anybody watches the video and wants to have a conversation with me about it, I am always open to doing so. I've never, I mean, people don't ever reach out to me to have conversations about Jenning and stuff like that. I've reached out to so many people. But yeah, this is a completely bad take. And the Danny guy says, nah, dude, you're excusing a guy who went out of his way to cheat. And it turns out he's he's the entire reason why he got caught in the first place why would you modify legit mods it's like he was asking to get dq'd that's the that's the exact correct take and he says this has nothing to do with my complaint this is what is it that's just a really awful take it does have to do with his take well i think right here he's deflecting because his original complaint is the fact that you need those games, which is fair. However, it's just, it's dismissive of the fact that Brady went out of his way to edit his own mods. So I see both sides here, but I do definitely think that I'm oblivious, maybe leaning in a little too hard on trying to act like everyone is casual, is extremely casual. And then this tweet right here kind of really annoys me a bit about how they handle things. And this is my opinion. I could be wrong about how this was handled. And so he says was four Oh at worlds, but they removed my Ursa Luna since it was modified and gave me a game loss for the Swiss round. I just run two Oh. So I had to play a game three without the best Pokemon in that matchup. And this led to a loss. So I think this is where a lot of people are going to have issues here because if Brady can get disqualified for having a uh, gym Pokemon, Federico should definitely be disqualified. Either institute the rules the same or don't, in, not institute, enforce the rules the same or don't enforce them at all. This is completely annoying. Like, I don't understand why you would just tell somebody, oh, he, you just lose the match. Assuming they did this thinking like, hey, five Pokemon, he won't win the rest of his things. And this kind of backfires. So I think this right here is going to probably cause a lot of controversy. And I'll let me check the quote tweets. Okay, he said four well, four one, me after getting two owed. I don't know what that says. And I don't think Twitter can translate anymore. Let me go back. Let's check the replies. He's like, so if I'm not wrong, they're making they are making you must have Legends Arceus. When we are competing in SV and forcing you to breed a zero IV speed Ursaluna, I see. I don't know what's going on with the hack checks, but it is being a carnage. Getting a zero speed Ursaluna, unless you're going for shiny, it's it's incredibly easy. It's incredibly easy. It's so easy to find somebody with dittos. I mean, it's going to take you some time, but this is something, depending on the dittos you have, this might take you like 15 minutes. Or maybe a couple hours, depending on how much you need to do. But to make a zero speed Ursaluna, this is incredibly easy. And I feel like some of the comments and some of the takes are trying to really over exaggerate how hard some of these things are. Now, like I said, if you're going for a shiny zero IV, that's a lot harder. But just going for zero IV speed for something you can breed, super easy. That is not hard at all. And let's see. But it does the job of maintaining the fairness in competition. It's it's really not. It is. It's really not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tweet. I'm gonna do. It is. Yeah, I had to say something. 
And so this guy says, I'm not trying to be a shield, but at the very least, you can breed it yourself. And that's my point. You can breed it yourself. Like, bro, and this is just, this is what kind of annoys me. Like, I've been in the Pokemon community for a long time, and I'm not trying to say, like, I know a lot of stuff, but these are just so, so, like, just trying to infantilize. Is that the right word? Trying to baby these players as if these things are impossible. Well, you can't assume that all your players will just have friends of a copy of Legends Arceus. When you compete, you have to have the tools you need. Bro, if you are someone who competes in tournaments, you most likely know a lot of people. You most likely know a lot of people, a lot of players. He probably could have bred that stuff at the tournament himself. I'm pretty sure there'll be some. Or, or how about this? Like I said before. Gen it and gen it properly, or if he or if you're talking about oh I, it's gonna be too hard, I'm pretty sure you can just go to a gen bot, gen you a ditto with the stats that you need because obviously this guy has knowledge of how to use PKX and stuff. Gen the ditto you need, like or just gen the gen the uh what is it the baby Teddy Ursa that you need. Trade it back and forth. That's like a five minute process. Like, it just, it makes no sense how much babying is going on right now. And this guy has a good take, that Danny kid again. He's like, so if you don't have friends to ask, go on, go online and ask the huge community instead. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it's like, dude, have you seen pictures of worlds? Have you ever been to worlds? There's thousands of people, thousands of games. Like, trying to act like, man, I'm at world. I'm not saying, this is not me saying stuff about Brady, but trying to act as if Brady's or any other players at Worlds and just be like, man, nobody's got games. That's just an incredibly awful and bad take, in my opinion. So let's, I don't really think there's anything else to really look at. I think there might have been some other quote tweets to what Brady said. And I'm just going to end the video here and just... After I look at a few more. Yes, Duncan's tweet. So, uh, they de they're DQing for teams of Gen Mons. Laugh my ass off. Worlds has zero competitors left, I guess. Every single person they run a check on will fail if the check is done well. Interesting to see how this turns out. Like, yeah, I feel like this is going to be a lot of controversy. If you know Duncan, Duncan run, ran um, Oakbot or whatever. That was on Twitch. I don't know if it's still active or not, but yeah, it was one of the biggest ginning Twitch server, uh, Twitches. To be clear, I don't think they will be doing in-depth hack checks, and there was probably something blatantly wrong with the team. I just think DQing for gen Pokemon should either be done with strict checks on everyone or not at all. Everyone gets gen, and it's been proven. Completely valid take. So, like I said, I think that the people getting caught are not having home trackers. So, I finally win. Verlissify was right. Man, so... And I'll end with this. Verlissify has been right about a lot of like cheating things. However, it's the way he goes about it. He is so toxic about it. And that's why he has a reputation that he has within the community as a whole. Like, it's like the saying, you catch more flies with honey. I don't know the rest of it, but yeah, that's the end of the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I will talk to you guys later.